Hello and welcome to lecture two of astrodynamics. So, tell you what, let's take what we did yesterday. We're continuing uh, basic orbital mechanics. Okay, and last time we talked about the end body problem. Now for starts, let's do the two body problem. And that just assumes, let's just get rid of every other mass in the universe, just look at two objects. Real realistic, huh? But anyway, that's what we do the entire rest of the course because we're noobs to this, so <laughs> we can't do all the fancy stuff just yet. Um, okay, so the two-body problem, in order to s simplify things, there are two basic uh, simplifying assumptions. One is that there's no bulginess to the object. It's, it's spherically symmetrical, and the reason for that assumption is that um, we don't have to worry about any sort of correction for the center of mass. It is in the center of the object. Simplifying assumption number two. There are no other forces, there's no thrust, there's no drag, there's no uh, solar pressure, you name it. It's just gravity, gravitational attraction along the um, uh, radius connecting the two center of masses. Okay, simplifying assumptions out of the way. Let's talk about um, our inertial coordinate system. Uh, and the reason we need that is because uh, you know, if we have rotating coordinate systems or, okay, I'd have to write several long equations on the board that took several, several minutes of class time when I took astro, when I, during class, and uh, <laughs> the professor came up with these really long expressions that involved, you know, four kinds of acceleration, and it's a waste of time because we're not even doing, using those equations, you know, so. Skip it. I'll, I'll just uh, show you the inertial coordinate system without the fancy rotating kinds of things. So here is um, our simple x, y, z um, coordinate system with the origin at the center of the big mass, big M. And we have a uh, little mass, little m out here, and this radius here, r, connects the two. And uh, for our inertial coordinate system, one that doesn't worry about this part moving, it's some arbitrary point out here in free space, and this is labeled z prime, y prime, and x prime. And the vectors connecting the origin of this coordinate system they're going to be denoted here from the origin to the big mass, R, big M, and then from the origin to little mass, R, little m. And to get just plain old R, which is what we want, we use vector subtraction. So R, a little m, minus R, big M. So there's our relationship. I hope you can see it. I don't know if I'm writing too small. I hate to have to redo this entire thing so hard. Just kidding. Anyway, uh, what was I going to talk about next? All right, we're on our way to coming up with the equation of motion for the two-body problem. OK, so um, what we need to do at this point is basically apply Newton's law of gravity, which we saw in the last video. So, Newton's law of gravity, basically, um, mass times the acceleration is equal to um, this constant called g, it's the same everywhere in the universe, times big mass times little mass, divided by the distance between them squared, and then since it's a vector, multiplied by the 
the vector pointing in the direction of R. Okay? And you can make this R cubed if you want. Alright, these masses obviously cancel um, for little m. So what we want to do is have this relationship for little m and big m, okay? Let me know when you run out of memory card and I'll come and erase you and start over. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera, not the YouTubers. By the way, if I'm not making sense to you, just bear in mind that it's like 2 in the morning right now. Okay. Um, so our little m is going to equal minus g times um, big M, uh, since the little m's cancel out, and then times the vector um, of little m divided by r little m squared, cubed, sorry. Okay, and vector of uh, big M is going to be minus g little m over r cubed times r big M. Oops. Okay, so now using this relationship, we can just subtract them. Okay, our double dot, this is supposed to be double dots here, sorry, that's acceleration. Um, so we can do minus g times, it will be m plus m, because the minuses cancel there, divided by r cubed times the vector r. Now, let's think about this, m, big m plus little m. Uh, as engineers, we get paid to think about things and make sense of things. Um, does, does it make sense to constantly be... Okay, the Earth... I forget the mass of the Earth, but I think it's somewhere on the order of magnitude of 10 to the 20-something, I don't know, maybe 25 kilograms. Uh, and, and, and a typical satellite might be, oh, 1,000 kilograms. And if you take this ratio, you find that, of course, uh, common sense also tells you this, is much greater than little m for normal problems. So, <clears throat> and for all intents and purposes, we can ignore or neglect the, uh, this um, little m. So if it's just g times m, We'll define this constant, and it's different for each planet that you're orbiting, or each star, called mu. Um, and mu is equal to g times m, big M. And uh, for Earth, this will be equal to 3.986 times 10 to the fifth power kilometers cubed per second. Um, and if you're going to be doing a lot of astrodynamics problems, that's a good number to memorize. It'll save you some time. Um, okay, so our final equation of motion is going to be uh, minus mu over r cubed times the vector r. And this here is our equation of motion for the two-body problem. Okay, so coming soon in future videos on astrodynamics, we're going to be talking about, got so close <laughs> before the memory card finally died. I was just going to say, for next time, we're going to be learning about numbers that are constant throughout any point in the orbit, and the reason why this is significant is that we can relate these constants to the geometry of the orbit. So, um, and this is interesting because where else do you see mechanical properties related directly to geomet geometric properties in the exact same equation? Think about it. But uh, yeah, this is 
an extremely important relationship, and we'll see that next time. And we'll also eventually talk about the trajectory equation, which relates the radius of the orbit to the angle called nu. It's called the um, anomaly, the flight, the something anomaly. I don't know why it's called the anomaly, but it is. The uh, true anomaly, true anomaly. So, and that's a very important, my, my professor in, in astrodynamics uh, said it, it could easily be the most important equation we learned all semester. So, I'll take his word for it. Anyway, that's all for this video. Please stay tuned for the third one.